So today, moving on that, we will further focus on some more properties of this uh, set of random variables. So today we will discuss the notion called covariance. So when we have a set of random variable, we know how to characterize the distributions. We already said that we are going to characterize that through the joint distributions. And we also want to understand some of these properties of this joint distribution. For example, if you recall for a single random variable, we had defined the notion of expectation and variance. But when we have a set of random variables, what kind of properties that we would be interested in? One thing that easily comes to mind is we want to basically understand how together they behave like both of them are moving in. Suppose you have two random variables x and y, you want to understand whether both of them are uh, taking in the values in the same direction or they, they take value in the opposite direction or some things of that nature, right. So let us see if we can try to capture that uh, through some of these uh, notions. We are going to call correlation. We are going to say so. Let's say we have let's say x and y are random variables on the same. Probability space. We are going to define correlation as simply expectation of the product. Then we are going to define their covariance as And the third thing we want to define as correlation coefficient. So also like I am inherently assuming that this random variable x and y are such that their second moments are finite, so that their variance is also finite, okay. So if the variance is not finite then this relation here, this definition is, uh, is not so clear, I mean not well defined, so or does not make sense. So that is why we just assume that their second moments or the variances are finite. So if you have two random variables, you can always try to characterize these values if I already know their joint distributions, right. If I know the joint distribution, I can just find the product and the using the associated joint distributions, I can compute all these things. Now, something that immediately comes to mind is suppose x is same as y or let us say y, x and y. So, y is just x. So, this is going to be what correlation in this case? So, expectation of x square that is basically second moment, right. And now in this case, if y is same as x, what is this going to be? 
and what is that? So if x equals to y, we know this is nothing but covariance of x, y is nothing but variance of x. So in a way like we are just like generalizing these notions when we have multiple set of random variables, right? Okay. Now to understand a bit more about uh, these properties, we have this relation what is called as Schwartz inequality. You people know what is the Schwartz inequality on a set of, uh, on a pair of vectors? So let us say A is a vector, B is a vector, their inner product is going to be? Norm of A vector and eh? is there a square root there or no? No square root there, right? So, okay, so if I am going to write it as this is going to be what? This is going to be summation i square and this is going to be summation b i square, right? So, what as a is a nothing but a vector with components a i's similarly. So, there is an analog version of this for our vectors also. So, that says if you are going to look at the expectation of this product, then this is going to be upper bound by expectation of x square y square. So, if you look at the correlation of the random variables x, y and if you look at their absolute value, that is going to be upper bounded in this fashion. And further, if you can show that reality is and only if So, does not their name directly indicate what they are? At least this meaning of correlation is clear like what is we are calling it correlation and what we are doing is taking their product and taking their expectation. How they are correlated? And uh, similarly covariance this is I, at the first time we can take it as an extensions of our variance definition right variance we define for single random variable. But now when we have two random variable and if you want to centralize them by removing the mean and then look at their correlation. So for example, if this covariance is what? This is nothing but correlations of this centered random variables, right? Where you are already removed the mean values. So we will we will try to interpret what this question coefficient means in a moment. So, for that we need to understand, uh, we need to have these bounds, the Schwarz inequalities. Okay, the Schwarz inequality says this, we can up, have an upper bound like this and uh, suppose at least one of these random variables second moment is not 0, then the inequality holds if and only if one random variable can be expressed as a linear is just a scaled version of the other random variable with probability 1 for some c. I do not know whatever that c, but as long as random variable y can be expressed, uh, so x can be expressed as y by scaling it with some c, this is if this holds then it is fine. Okay, now a quick look into why this relation should hold. Okay. So let us take the case of let us try to understand this. So this can be expressed as what 
expectation of x square minus 2 lambda expectation of x y plus lambda square expectation of y square. I just just expanded it. So just check that if both x and y they have finite second moment this quantity is always going to be bounded and further this quantity is going to be greater than or equals to 0. It is going to be greater than or equals to 0 it is clear right because we are squaring and taking expectation. But this is also going to be true because you can always bound that look for any a and b this relation holds because of that you just expand this and then apply this result in terms and uh, we know that the second moments are fine you can also argue that this is going to be finite. So, just verify that and now this is true irrespective of what lambda I choose right as long as lambda is finite this relation the second relation is true whatever lambda I am going to set. Now, set specifically expectation of x y divided by Now, if you are going to simplify, so for time being assume that expectation of y square is not 0 and then I can then this is defined properly then I am going to take that value as lambda. If I am going to take that lambda and plug in here this is going to be equal to expectation of x square minus expectation of x y divided by expectation of y square just by plugging that lambda value and just simplifying you get it and this we already know this is going to be greater than or equals to 0 right now if you just going to yeah so I am saying that at least assume one of them was not equals to 0 right I will just first consider a case expectation of y square is not equals to 0 and then define lambda in that case like this and then plug in ok. If you want to consider the case expectation of x is not equals to 0 then just do the opposite you just take y minus lambda x and then uh, define it then replace expectation of y square by x square you can do similarly. Now, if you just do this cross multiplication here and simplify you get exactly what is called what we are claiming as Schwarz inequality fine. Now, to look into this again it is uh, easy to see that if suppose let us say first assume the case x equals to cy for some c. If you now just go back and plug y equals to c x here you see that both right hand side and left hand side match in that case they hold with equality ok. Now, assume that this relation holds with equality then you can see that now you have to come up with what is the value of c that works out here right in this case you just going to take that c to be this value lambda whatever you have. In that case also then if the equality holds then that equality is satisfied this value of lambda you can just uh, check that ok fine. So, with this we have this relation expectation of this correlation the mod of this correlation is upper bounded by this quantity. Okay, now I have this. Now replace x by define a new random variable. Let us say x prime 
which is going to be x minus expectation of x and then y prime equals to y expectation of y okay do this just have defined two new random variables right and uh, if they have finite second moments x and y so does x prime and y prime will have finite second moments now you just plug in here if i just plug in here what i'm going to get expectation of so if you replace x by x prime and y by y prime and then here also x get replaced by x prime y by y prime then what you are going to get is basically Right. I have just replaced x, x by x prime and then introduce the definitions we have. So now if you look into this, what is the quantity on the left hand side I have? This is expectation of centered x and y, right? This is what we call, this is according to our definition, this is nothing but covariance. And what is this quantity over here? Expectation of x minus expectation of x whole square. This is nothing but variance of x. And then we have variance of y. Okay. So now with this relation, what we can write away say about this rho x y. So I know that rho x y is going to be less than or equals to 1. Okay, now let us try to understand what is this correlation coefficient means. So what we are trying to like as I said we have a two random variables in this case and we have all these properties. What we understand is how the behavior like is there anything we can <coughs> infer when we look them jointly. So as of now our correlation coefficient the way we have defined we have shown that that is going to be less than or equals to 1 and now let us understand so this is like mod here right because uh, I had a mod here and uh, so this is uh, what I am saying is absolute value of rho x y is less than or equals to 1 that means my rho x y will be between 1 and minus 1. Okay, suppose if I find out that this correlation coefficient happens to be more than it, it is going to be less than 1 but I also know that that it is going to be more than 0 that is my rho x y happens to be positive. What does that mean? So let us take a simple, I am going to take two events A and B, okay, to some two events that are coming from my script f. Now I am going to define a random variable x which is going to be 1 if a occurs 0 otherwise. I can define a random variable like this, right? Whenever event A happens, I am going to uh, take the outcome to be 1. If anything other than this happens, I will simply say 0. And I am going to define another random variable if B occurs and 0 otherwise. Now I want to understand, suppose 
is there anything like if B happens, already happened, subsequently or whatever, like I want to understand, given that B has happened, does it have any bearing on happening of A? Does it make happening of A more likely or less likely? Or that uh, what kind of information it reveals to me? So, let us try to understand by evaluating this correlation coefficient here. So, covariance of x y, I have written the formula here, but if you are just going to cross multiply the terms within the square bracket and expand them, it simplifies to simply Okay, it just simplifies, so just uh, do the multiplication and expand. Now, I am going to take this, I am going to apply this formula on these two specific random variable I have defined here. Okay. What are the possible values the product x, y can take? It can only take 1 or 0, right? It is going to take 1 when? 1 occurs, right? And then what is going to be the expected value of x and y? Probability that x equals to 1 and that is the only case when that value is 1 in all the cases other is going to be 0. That is why expectation of x, y is nothing but this probability into 1, but I am skipping that 1 here. Now, what about this? What is expectation of x? This is going to be simply x equals to 1 and y equals to 1, right? Because I am talking about expectation, right? So, how you are going to compute the expectation? Expectation is value of this and the corresponding probability. Probability are written, the associated value, when the value of this random variable with this probability is 1, right? That is exactly the expectation value. All other terms are going to be 0. Now, suppose let us say, assume, assume the covariance is going to be positive. If this is positive, let us say, if and only if, because this is an equality, this guy is going to be positive, right? And uh, this is positive. And uh, this guy is positive implies, now focus on this part. So, this is nothing but probability that x equals to 1, y equals to 1. Probability what I want here is x equals to 1 is greater than probability that y equals to 1. And now, if you apply the conditional probability definition here, what is this? y given x, right? Now, go back and uh, let us go back and plug in the meaning of this. x equals to 1 means a occurs, y equals to 1 means b occurs, right. Now, what it is saying is, suppose let us say x equals to 1, that is a has occurred. Now, what is saying that the probability that b has occurred is more than just like probability of even B that itself occurring. That means, if A has, if you know that A has occurred, that B is also occurring seems to be higher than just, if you are going to ask the question whether B has occurred. 
So what it is selling the covariance is selling that if the covariance is positive, that means one event happening already gives, it says that the other event happening conditioned on this is more likely than the under unconditional probability. And this is what if you are going to take this to be positive. If you are going to take this to be negative, what is that? It is going to be opposite, right? That means the condition that A event has occurred, the probability that B is occurring is now going to be less than the unconditional probability of B happening itself. So, in a way, what is happening if covariance is positive, that means one event happening has increased the likelihood of other event also ha happening together. So, that is the meaning of covariance here. Yeah? Yeah, so if you want to. So, if x and y are independent, this is going to be 0, right? So, if independence means. So, if, 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 if it. Okay, so now let us come to the case like equals to 0, covariance x y equals to 0. If covariance x y equals to 0 means what? Expectation of x y is equal to expectation of x into expectation of y. When is expectation of x y is going to be equal to expectation of x into expectation of y? Well, x and y are independent, right? So, one, so in that case, you, if x and y are independent, you already un understand that happening of one will not reveal any information about the other. Only when they are uh, other than independent, maybe one will give information about happening or not happening about the other thing. So, as you already see, independence. implies. So, we are going to say that when the covariance are going to be 0 of x and y, we are going to say x and y are uncorrelated, okay, when the covariance is 0. So, independence implies uncorrelated. But is it is in general not true that the other direction is true. Uncorrelation, if two random wells are uncorrelated, it not mean that they are independent. So, you think about examples where that is going to happen, I will just leave it as an exercise for you. Okay, we already said that when covariance is 0, we are going to call uncorrelated, independence implies uncorrelated, and then we already said that. When x equals to y, covariance implies variance of the random variable x. Now, I am going to quickly list some properties. You can verify yourself. They are just like so. If you recall, when we had expectation of defined expectation, we have defined various properties of expectations, right? Like expectation is linear expectation of a random variable if you scale, expectation also just scales all these properties. So, similarly we can write properties of covariance. So, if you have covariance of x plus y and u plus v. So, now you are looking at two random variables which are themselves expressed as sum of other two random variables, right. So, this is one random variable which is expressed as sum of these two random variables. This can be expressed as covariance in terms of the covariance of this pair of random variables like this x u plus covariance of x comma v plus covariance of y comma u plus covariance of x comma y comma u and similarly covariance of ax plus b cy plus d. 
Okay. So here again I am looking at covariance of two random variables, but each random variable is now affine function of another random variable. Okay. Now how how what will be the covariance of this? The covariance of this is going to be simply a into c the covariance of x comma y. So it does not matter what is the value of b and d here. The the intercept values in this affine function did not matter. All you need to do is what value you are scaling this value. The constant offset is not going to affect your covariance metric. Covariance like this. Okay, so often you will be you will end up with sum of random variables. So, for example, think of uh, five courses, and the number you are going to get in each course is like a random variable. Let's call x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and you want to decide what is the total sum of the marks I'm going to get across these five courses. So, in that case. Uh, you are going to define some random variable like this. Let us say x1 plus x2 all the way up to xm, and for this, you want to basically calculate, let us say, the variance of this sum across your five courses scores. So, how you are going to compute this? One thing is, yeah, is it is it variance of x one plus x two is equals to variance of x plus variance of x two? We know that expectation of x one plus x two is expectation of x one plus expectation of x two, but we never said variance is also linear, right? Expectation is a linear operator, but not variance. Now, how you are going to calculate the variance of this? We have no by definition variance is nothing but covariance of SM comp SM. Now, does this help? If I am going to write like this, does it help? Why it helps? Because then I can go and exploit this property, right? And if I can exploit, then I know I have to only worry about. Uh, a pair of random variable at any time. So, if this is the case, you can just go and expand all these things. What you will end up is basically variance of xi i equals to 1 to m, then equals to j of covariance of xi and xj. You can just, uh, I am just like simplifying this after you plug in this covariance term with this sm defined like the sum of random variables. So, here I have defined only for two random variables in the sum, right, but you can expand this if you have more than two here. Suppose, let us say you have three here. How you are how you are going to apply this formula to get it work for this sum of three random variables? So you can initially treat these two as one random variable. Then we have only sum of two random variable. Apply the formula, and then expand on this. I mean each pair. You can group so that you are uh, dealing with only sum of two random variables and expand that group. Okay. So, by doing this, you will end up with this formula. Please verify this. Okay, suppose I say that the sum the scores you are going to get in these five courses are independent. Okay, it does not uh, one course is going to score of one course. So, then how does this formula simplifies? 
So then if all of them are independent, this is going to be. So is it necessary that in this case I need to tell you that the scores are independent or is it sufficient if I say that they are pairwise independent? So we know that like pairwise independence is a weaker notion than independence right across the set of random variables. So what I need here? I need a independence or just a pairwise independence? Yeah. Pairwise independence will make this term 0. In this case it is simply going to be some of the variance of each of your uh, random variables. Okay, fine. And if I say further that all of them are identically distributed, that means they have the same x. same x, but they are just like multiple copies. If I say they are all identically distributed, then you can just write it as like m times the variance of x1 because these are all going to be the same value. 